Hey gorgeous souls and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another one of my videos. So today is a podcast episode from my podcast, Spiritual Queen's Badass Podcast. And I'm so excited to share this interview with you today with the incredible John Hillstead. So John Hillstead is a manifestation coach and TikToker. I have followed him on TikTok for absolutely ages and loved his videos so much and all the amazing tools and humor he brings to his manifestation practice. So when John came on the podcast, we had such a fantastic conversation where we dive into the secrets to law of attraction together. We talk about the inner work, inner child work, shadow work, and what really led both of us to getting to the place where we are manifesting our desires and we are experiencing that abundance. This is such a deeply enriching conversation and it was such a joy speaking to John and learning his side of manifestation and how he helps his clients with manifestation too. So I really hope you're going to enjoy this interview. And of course, you can find a clickable link to John's work in the description description below and if you want to find any more interviews just like this from my podcast my podcast spiritual queens badass podcast is available on all platforms that distribute podcasts and here on my youtube channel i have a whole playlist of video interviews with incredible teachers authors and gurus on all things spirituality self-help and law of attraction so please let me know in the comments your biggest takeaway from john and i's episode and i really hope you are going to enjoy it so thank you so much guys for watching. I appreciate all your views and likes. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here because I would love, love to see you again soon. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comments box down below because I reply to them all. And don't forget you can join my free Law of Attraction support group over on Facebook where you can join myself and other like-minded souls where we talk all things Law of Attraction and spirituality. I hope you have a fantastic week, whatever you're up to, and I will see you all in my next video, which will be on Friday. Lots of love. So thank you so much guys for joining me for another one of my Spiritual Queens Badass Podcast episodes. I am so excited to have John Hillstead with us today. So John, if you don't know, is a manifestation and mindset coach. He's a certified master NLP practitioner, time technique practitioner, life and success coach, EFT practitioner, and neuro breathwork practitioner. He's here to help you reprogram your subconscious mind and manifest your dream life. So I came across John on TikTok, gosh, must be like five, six months ago now now and I saw him twerking up against a massive amethyst and I was like this is some of me like I need John's energy in my life so I followed him from that moment and I've fallen in love with his videos so I was so thrilled when he said yes to coming onto the podcast so welcome to the show John thanks Emma hey spiritual queens um that's so funny that that was the first video you saw I love that video that was super fun but I also like I had been following you for a while like I had first seen your content on YouTube years ago and it was kind of one of my introductions to manifestation like I was going down a deep rabbit hole and I was watching all your videos way back in like 2018 I think it was so it's really cool like this full circle moment to like be sitting here talking with you and uh yeah I feel like so excited to be here thanks for having me well, I'm excited for you to be here. And when you said that on Instagram, I was like, what? Isn't the universe crazy? How right. like it's literally come full circle. We've connected. Um, and anybody who doesn't follow John, you really should because his videos are just such epic energy of fun, laughter, twerking, amazing <laughs> vibes with manifestation in the universe. So um, how many followers have you got on TikTok now? Um, I think TikTok is like 240,000. Just a few then, just a just few, a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple, you know, just a just small little community. And how did it feel like going on TikTok and that just like taking off? Was it something you expected? Was it something that just happened overnight? It was, it happened pretty quickly. Like I had started creating content on TikTok in the middle of 2020, like during the quarantine. And, um, you know, I think at that time it was still kind of a new thing. Not a lot of people were on the app and I just had so much fun. It, I felt like I could be myself there. Whereas Instagram, I always felt like I had to, you know, create this like, you know, conditioned, like beautiful spread of like perfection. And so TikTok was like kind of giving me permission to just be myself. Um, and so I think that helped me to just like crack myself open and be myself and, you know, do silly things and express myself in unique ways. Um, and yeah, it, I, it just kind of took off like at the beginning, like I think, you know, I really had a lot of success there on TikTok at the very beginning. And then I think a lot of other people started coming on the app. So it was harder to reach people, but um, I love it so much. It's just allowed me to express myself creatively in ways that I never thought I could do. 
Um, so it's been it's been a fun journey. I bet. And it's clearly working. People clearly enjoy the content. And I think I'm the same. Like I was so resistant about going on TikTok for so long. <laughs> like my friend George was like, I'm never going on there, George. It's awful. And here I am obsessed with it. And I'm like, it's the best thing I did. And I really agree that you really can express your true authentic self on there where like, I want to dance on there. I want to do fun stuff. I want to express, you know, all these different facets of myself and like bring comedy and lighthearted humor spirituality whereas like you say instagram feels like you must do this blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> whereas tiktok it's like anything goes you could just be who you want to be and people are going to yeah. love it <laughs> totally and i see that shift happening with instagram you know as the reels are happening more and more i think people are opening up to that side of themselves and allowing themselves to have fun which is really important so it's and I think cool. the energy of it's good as well like when you're having fun and you're enjoying yourself like that's going to rub off on people watching so yeah, totally I love it right well we better get to the official questions John otherwise <laughs> we'll be talking for hours and everyone will be like what is this podcast about so yeah. my first question that I love to ask every guest when they come on is when did you spiritually awaken what's your story yeah so there were kind of a few moments um you know it was the big oh the big awakening like events happened for me in 2019 so not that long ago um I just remember at the beginning of 2019, I was in this place. I was really depressed. I was like going through a lot at the time. I was feeling really hopeless, lost. I didn't really have a direction. Um, you know, had high social anxiety, depression. I was like in this really low place in my life. I would say like the lowest low I've ever been in my life. I was in this little tiny studio apartment in Seattle and just living paycheck to paycheck, trying to, you know, make ends meet and, um, you know, working my day job and driving like, Uber Eats on the side, trying to make everything work. And I just remember sitting in my bathroom thinking of like, how can I end this? Like, I'm, I give up. Like, I'm just so lost right now. Like, how can I actually end this? Like having those suicidal ideations. And it was in that moment, like I became the awareness. Like I, you know, realized that I was the observer of these thoughts and I, I separated myself from the thoughts. I'm like, wait a second, I'm not these thoughts. Like, what is happening? I just had this like big aha moment. And from then on, I was like, okay, there's got to be a way to, to heal, to, to feel better, to get better. Um, so I started to talk therapy for a little bit and then that wasn't working for me. I was like, I need to expedite this process. I felt like called to just like, I wanted to just, you know, heal as quickly as possible because I had spent so many years struggling um so I was literally I went down a YouTube rabbit hole of like looking up videos about depression anxiety like all this stuff like I was going down the rabbit hole and I came across um ayahuasca one of the YouTubers that I was watching was talking about plant medicine and it felt so right it felt so like in line with what I was supposed to do it just was like an intuitive knowing and so I went down to South America and did a 12-day ayahuasca retreat and then that really opened me up to like the spiritual world and like what is really going on and who I really am um, in such an intense way. Um, so that there was a couple that happened that year. There was a few like, you know, spiritual awakenings that happened that year. Um, so I, I think, you know, in short, that's kind of <laughs> my story of what happened um, during my spiritual awakening. And I think, you know, your story is so common. Like I definitely relate to that. Like at the beginning of my awakening was depression, suicidal thoughts, like wanting to end it all and, not, you know, feeling helpless. So I think so many people can really relate to that, you know, to our stories here and be like, wow, like, you know, I've been in that place or I feel like I'm in that place. And, you know, I, I think it's important that we talk about it because it is very real and it is a very real thing that we go through and depression is very real. And, you know, you're actually the first person that I've spoken to here on this podcast who has gone and done plant medicine. And that was kind of like their awakening and their healing as such. And it's really fascinating to learn about that because I went through very like traditional roots and like therapy and IMT and inner child work and all of these things self-love law of attraction whereas it's great to hear like you just went and did that and it felt like that whole body yes so for anybody listening who's not aware what ayahuasca is can you just explain what it is and sort of what happened for you yeah so it's a it's a pl native plant medicine from South America and um it is a psychedelic it's hallucinogenic but um the natives use it there as their 
that's it's their medicine right so um a lot of people call it a drug but you know it's it's medicine it's very healing and um it was i did a lot of research around it before i went you know i was like reading books and looking at videos and doing all this work beforehand but I really didn't know what I was actually getting myself into. Like, you don't really know until you actually experience it. And every experience is different. Every ceremony and each person has a different experience. So you never really know what's what's happening. But what it did for me was really allowed me to tap into my subconscious mind. And, um, it you know, you work with this spirit, like ayahuasca, she is this mother spirit. It's like, think of like mother Gaia, like mother nature feminine energy and she's there guiding you through this journey this process of healing and, you know she's like a tough mom she's like she'll be the first one to kick you off the cliff but also the first one to catch you right like she's she, you know she knows what you need but she's also going to be there to support you through the process so it was just uncovering a lot of repressed memories of repressed traumas that I had you know pushed down into my subconscious and um those came up to be revealed to be healed in that moment um which can also be done in other ways right doing inner child work doing subconscious reprogramming work doing all these type of works but it was just like oh you wanted an expedited process you got it so it was like we are doing this we are going full on full in like there's no turning back like it was exactly what i needed it was definitely one of the most challenging and difficult experiences of my life but also the most rewarding and the most loving experiences as well so um yeah it was it was a little intense but <laughs> I wouldn't have changed it I wouldn't have done it any other way it was all you know perfectly aligned everything happened as it was as it was meant to I can imagine that was intense definitely it sounds it I've watched like a lot of documentaries on it of people going to do it and you've had like complete muggles who are completely <laughs> unawakened doing it and then you've had like you know quite spiritual who've been on the path they're working through their inner work to do it so it's really interesting to see how each person responds to it and obviously like you say it's every ceremony is different everybody's experience is different but I always worry that if I would do it that I would be the one who's just being sick everywhere like constantly <laughs> It would just be so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt the same way too. And I hate throwing up. Like that's like the worst. I do not like it. So I would always resist, like I would resist throwing up, but that's like, it, you are literally purging the energy from your physical body. Like that's, it's like your body wants to get rid of it. And so it's just, it feels so good once you do it. But yeah, I'm the same. I'm like, I don't want to be puking. I don't want to be like shitting my brains out. And like, is everybody watching me? Like, you know, you, you have those thoughts, but after a while, you're just like, okay, we're all just out here puking our guts out. Like it's a mess. <laughs> we're just going to embrace it. Okay. <laughs> um, Embracing yeah. that spiritual mess. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah. really interesting to hear your story and hear how you got into this. And like, like you say, how you had that really sort of like abrupt awakening into spirituality and abrupt, like deal with your stuff, John, like you want to, you know, fast track this, here it is, here's all your stuff, um, you know, let's deal with it. So how did this then lead to what you do now? What were you doing before career wise? Yeah. So before I was working in a, uh, for a travel company and, um, I was basically a travel agent and I would create custom trips for people to travel to South America. So I've always had this tie and this connection to Latin America, to South America, and I've done a lot of travel there. So I had heard of ayahuasca before, but I was just like, wait a second, what? You're going to go into the Amazon to random, some random shaman, puke your brains out, shit yourself and like, what? That sounds crazy. Um, so I was working for this travel company and, um, you know, I was just, it was fun. It was great. It allowed me to travel. I feel super grateful for the experience, but it just wasn't like, you know, it wasn't my purpose. I knew deep down that like there was something greater for me. Um, so it was actually one of the ceremonies of ayahuasca where I, you know, had this awakening of my, of my purpose and it wasn't clear specifically what it was. It was just that I, I was to be of service. I'm supposed to help people. I was like, I want to help people in any way I can. I want to be there to support people during their journey, you know? Um, so I started to just go down the rabbit hole of all things spiritual, right? Like chakras crystals meditation like all these things like trying different modalities and tools just because I was so curious and um for me manifestation really landed because it was one of the things that like really helped me make that shift from like always seeking outside of myself for validation always looking to the future to be happy it really called me back to presence and 
taught me how to, you know, that my power is in my now moment and that I can be grateful for where I am right now and realizing that I have the power, the ability, uh, you know, the control, basically, like I can create my reality. You know, I was living in victim mode for many, many years. Like everything has happened to me. Woe is me. And so, you know, understanding law of attraction and manifestation, I was like, wait a second. I'm, I, I have control. I have like the power to create my reality. Like this is amazing. Um, so it really, it was just super fun for me. It was so much fun. You know, I had the most fun learning about law of attraction, learning about manifestation, implementing it in my own life and seeing the results. And so I was like, if I can do this, like if I can have experienced these results and shift my reality, like everybody needs to know this, like everybody needs these tools. So it was just a natural progression into like helping others, you know, manifest their dream life. Love that. And like you say, it was that natural progression where you knew you had that inkling to serve people and you knew that you wanted to do something, but it doesn't always feel crystal clear at the beginning. I think people when they're finding their purpose or want to find it, they're like, I must have crystal, crystal clear clarity from day one. I must have the full picture. And it just doesn't work like that. Like it definitely doesn't for me and my business has grown and evolved over the years. I've shifted and evolved as I've grown and evolved as a person. And, you know, our likes, our dislikes change, our passions change. So it's just like those breadcrumbs, isn't it? Of like following one breadcrumb at a time and seeing where it takes you and following that passion and following that calling, isn't it? Yes, 100%. Yeah, I was like, okay, I need to know my purpose right now. I want to know. And it was just like, calm down like that's my vibe like I'm always like let's go I want to do this but then it's like okay slow down okay calm down <laughs> yeah it just kind of unfolds doesn't it it like you follow your bliss you follow your excitement and then it just kind of all comes together beautifully and it also like you said it also evolves as you evolve right your purpose is going to change over time as you change um so I definitely have seen that over the last two years um happening for me as well um yeah Love it. Well, let's talk more about your work then. So how can we become more high vibe in our everyday life, John? I love that question. Um, that's one of my intentions this year is to continue to raise my frequency, my vibration. And I think that for a lot of people, especially right now during this time, it's so important to, to bring in more play, more fun, more joy, like doing things you love to do as a kid, right? We're often you know, caught up in our lives and being adults and doing the adult thing and, you know, doing our businesses and all that. And it's like, wait a second, let's bring in some joy, some play, some fun. So um, yeah, like I've been trying to incorporate more of that as well. Like, you know, I was thinking about going to the store the other day and, and buying a Lego set because I used to love to build Legos, you know, doing little things like that. Um, my mom, she sent me a video yesterday, actually, of she just bought some roller skates and she sent me a video of her like roller skating through her house. And I was like, yes, mom, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> um, so just doing things like that, like we need fun hobbies, incorporate more play, more fun, more joy, because it's only going to help you raise your frequency. And that only helps you manifest. Right. So, um, yeah. And fantastic inner child work as well while you're yes, at it. 100 <laughs> percent. And like, get that Lego, John, honestly, like I got, what did I get? I got kinetic sand last lockdown. And because my, my little goddaughters play with it all the time. And I was like, God, I just really want to take this home. This is so therapeutic. Like, I love it. So I was like, Emma, get your own kinetic sand. So I got it. And honestly, it's the most therapeutic thing ever where literally it's like Play-Doh, but I don't know if you felt it. It's like, it just yeah. Falls away it's the best um yeah. and that was like my little sort of like inner child purchase which brought me fun and it was nice and relaxing and then I did like painting my numbers and stuff so I think we have to embrace that fun element we have to embrace that inner child that fun element and like you say like that is the key to raising your vibe yes 100 get out that coloring book you know what I mean go <laughs> jump in those puddles outside <laughs> yes, I saw your TikTok where you were jumping in. Was it jumping in the puddles for inner child work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so was fun. It was the best. Oh my God. Everyone looked at me like I was crazy, but I was like, I don't care. This is the best. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your top go-to tools for manifesting then? Um, top go-to tools for manifesting. For me, hypnotherapy, hypnosis um, is huge. It's something that I've used in my own manifestation journey and found a lot of success with. 
Um, I remember at the very beginning, I would listen to a hypnosis recording every single night before going to bed. Um, and I also learned it myself and became certified hypnotherapist. And I, you know, use it with my clients and in my coaching as well. Um, but for me, it's the most powerful because, you know, we are manifesting from our subconscious, right? Our subconscious is creating over 95% of our life. And so with hypnotherapy, it gives us the ability to access the subconscious mind directly, bypass the conscious mind, go directly to the subconscious and implant those new empowering beliefs, new identity, new values. Um, so for me, hypnosis is like my fave manifestation tool. And I actually haven't used hypnosis for manifesting before. So now you've said it, I'm like, God, I really need to try this. Uh, <laughs> it clearly oh works. But um, what was interesting is in my membership la, in December, we did confidence month and we had a lady who does hypnotherapy come in for confidence and she specializes in confidence and anxiety. And that was my first, I'd done hypnotherapy and CBT counseling years back with my depression, but I hadn't done hypnotherapy since from like a spiritual manifestation perspective. So we did it for confidence. And I tell you what, like, obviously it was for the Queens, it was for the members, but I did it as well. And honestly, I saw so many shifts afterwards where I was like, wow, like this stuff really works. So the fact we can use it for manifestation as well is fantastic. And what would you say for sort of any skeptics out there about hypnotherapy who feel like, oh, you're hypnotizing me or anything like that? Like, are you awake? Like, what can you expect? Yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions about hypnosis out there, right? Because that's our that's our idea of it, because it's portrayed in the media and in movies as this like mind control tool, right? It's like, um, you, you know, you see the guy with the pendulum, like you're getting sleepy. Um, but really, that's not what it is at all. It's com it's a complete like, you know, it's all self control, you are conscious and awake the whole time, you're just in this deep, like, trance state, you know, you're in a slowed down brainwave state. So um, anything the hypnotherapist is saying, you can accept or reject. You are in complete control of um, what you're doing. And um, yeah, it's just important to also like have that rapport and that trust with that person that you're, you know, experiencing that hypnotherapy session with. I think that's super important as well. Um, so yeah, it's actually complete self-control, display of self-control, yeah. And I think what's good as well about hypnotherapy is it's kind of covering the two aspects. It's covering the manifestation, but also the subconscious and limiting beliefs and fears. And I always love when I find someone who's like manifestation and inner work, because I'm like, yes, you're singing huh. off my hymn sheet. Yes, you're like literally we're in sync. And, you know, I only know, I only preach that so much but, and teach it because obviously like I've lived it. And I think you know, when you come across the law of attraction, you know, it's all like, oh my God, I can have all this stuff. Fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. And then like s shit happens. And then you're like, <laughs> oh my God, what is happening? Like, why are all these fears here? Why do I feel so unworthy? Why are my manifestations not showing up? And I think a lot of old school teachings don't really cover that. And then I found I was kind of just stuck there. Like, well, <laughs> Now I feel worse than what I did to start off with. So, you know, like, I think it's so important that we do incorporate all of it and understand it is a process. And actually there's more to the law of attraction than meets the eye, right? Absolutely. You know, I watched The Secret in 2007 when it came out and I was so fired up about it. I was like, okay, this is really empowering. Like I'm going to manifest six figures this year. I did not manifest six figures that year. Okay. Because I didn't believe subconsciously that I, it was possible. I didn't believe I was worthy of it. I was scared to, you know, I, I didn't feel safe to have that amount of money. So it was like, consciously, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I want to be, you know, make this money. But on that deeper subconscious level, I was like repelling it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, the deep inner work is so important. So crucial. If you want to really start creating, you know, those big things like a successful business financial freedom like you know there's a lot of deep inner work that that goes into that right mm, absolutely absolutely so what do you feel the biggest secret to manifestation is John what would you say like if you could pick one thing what would be the biggest secret do you feel Ooh, this is a good one um I always tell people that it's not really the the physical manifestation we want like we think we want maybe the relationship or the successful business or the money in the bank account. 
but it's actually the emotion, the feeling we want to experience. Like, what is that going to do for us? Like, how is that going to make us actually feel? Like, we're actually looking to experience the emotion and the feeling that the manifestation will bring us. And so learning to feel that before we have it is going to allow us to attract it. So I keep telling people, what's the feeling you want? What's the emotion you want to experience when it manifests? And then tap into that frequency, tap into that emotion as often as possible. And it's going to allow you to align yourself with that vibration. So mm. feel it before you have it. Yes, absolutely. I love that. And I swear by that as well, because it's just like you say, it's all energy. Yes. In the human 3D-ness, it looks like a person or it looks like a job or it looks like, you know, piles of money or whatever, or, uh, you know, uh, figures on your phone or whatever. But really, you know, it is an emotion. It is a feeling. So actually, like you say, when we tap into that, when we feel that, when we embody that, when we become that, you know, yes it's the law of attraction. It has to come to you. Like experiences of that energy are going to come to you. It's just the laws of the universe, the laws of attraction as such. So um, I love that. I definitely think that is one of the big key secrets. Absolutely. So in your experience as a coach, then what do you find is the number one block um, with people when it comes to manifesting? Yeah, I think it comes down to limiting decisions, limiting beliefs. Um, Huge block in my own experience working you know on for myself and with clients um because yeah like i said consciously we can want something or desire something but if there's a limiting belief that's like we don't it doesn't we don't believe it's possible to achieve or we think it's going to be a struggle or we don't deserve it or it's not safe to it's probably not going to happen so it's those limiting beliefs as soon as i like eliminated those deep deep wounds like you know the deepest ones are usually worthiness and mm -hmm. safety is it safe for me to experience this to have this is it do i feel worthy do i deserve this once we like address those the other ones kind of fall off i feel like mm -hmm. um so limiting decisions um i feel like are one of the biggest blocks for people and i think a lot of people have heard of limiting beliefs but limiting decisions are actually they come before the belief because there was a moment in time where we decided to take on that belief, right? So I help my clients go back to that very first time that they decided to believe that to be true about themselves. And then we release it from that very first root moment. Mm. Amazing. And, you know, it's so true, isn't it? Like worthiness is the one thing that I see and I definitely have had to deal within myself like time and time again, my clients, maybe I'm just attracting that type of person, but I do see it a lot in the feminine. I see it a lot of like worthiness, feeling worthy of their desires, feeling worthy of whatever it may be. Um, I definitely feel like that's such a reoccurring thing that, um, you know, people experience and people feel because of society, because of all different aspects, you know, they're born into that culture, they're born into that sort of environment. And, you know, it's like, it's mad when you think how many people are walking around with these wounds of like, I'm not enough or, you know, I'm not this. And when we realize that, you know, like how we're interacting, how we're coming, you know, coming into the world, we're all just projecting our inner world outwards of like the wounds, the limiting beliefs, the limiting decisions, like you say, we're all just projecting that out. So really we can never take anything personally because it's never about you. It's always about the other person and what they've experienced, what their beliefs are and how they're perceiving things through their own trauma and through their own inner, inner blocks, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it's, it's so fascinating, isn't it? Seeing what comes up for people and how it all links back to these events. Um, you know, it's rewarding, but deeply interesting, isn't it? Totally. It's always kind of like a puzzle for me too, working with the client. I'm like, oh, well, let's figure this out. Let's figure out where the blockage is and how, where that comes from and how we can like work with it to like release it, to move forward. It's honestly so much fun. It's challenging and it's emotional and it's, you know, very heavy sometimes, but it's also so rewarding. I love working with limiting beliefs. Mm, I agree with you, John. I agree with you. Um, so my last question, actually, no, before my last question to you, I have another question, an extra bonus question, which I wanted to chuck in because everybody who listens to this podcast loves success stories, loves hearing what we're manifesting, what other people are manifesting. So I would love to know what your best manifestations have been. Ooh, that's a good one um some of my best manifestations um I would say my 
my business has been a, a really exciting manifestation for me. Um, I feel like it was something that just like took off. Like I aligned myself with it. I was in a, like a really good vibrational state. I had this like, you know, solid vision for what I wanted to create. And I made it happen and it made it happen pretty quickly. Like, you know, like this, the, the first year of the business, like was a six figure year. And so I was just like, holy shit, like this is possible for me. So that was huge. Um, I would say like this particular apartment was really exciting for me when I manifested it because I was like almost identical to what I had envisioned, um, even better than I had imagined. Um, so I remember that being like super exciting for me. And more recently, like I went on a trip to Kauai and beforehand I was having these, like, <clears throat> I did a Reiki session. And in the session, I was having like visions of dolphins. And like, I was like speaking to the dolphins, like, I don't even know how. And um, they, <laughs> they were like communicating with me in the Reiki session. I was like, okay, that was weird. I've never like done that before. And then I go to Kauai and we were on a boat and there's literally like 200 dolphins around us, like just wow. swimming right along the boat. It was one of the most magical things I've ever experienced. And so it was like kind of this, like I had always dreamed of having that experience. Like, you know, you see like those dolphins playing and jumping by the boats. And I was always like, yes, that is, that would be amazing. Um, so I would say those, I don't know, those three are, are coming to mind right now. There's been many more, but um, those are coming to mind right now. I was going to say they're pretty good manifestations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm here for all of that, yes. but amazing. So, okay. My final question to you today then is what is one piece of life advice that you would like to leave my listeners with? All right, spiritual Queens, listen up. <laughs> no. um, I would say, you know, for me this year, I think it's a very simple teaching, like presence, like returning to the present moment, right? We're we often think about where we wanna go next, what's the next thing we wanna achieve, what's our next dream, what's the next thing we wanna manifest. And so we, I personally even get caught stuck in this like cycle of like looking to the next thing, right? And remembering to just come back to the present moment and being as present as possible, as often as possible is so crucial to that process because our power is coming from this now moment, from this present moment. And we only ever have this present moment so I would just say, like, make that a conscious decision now to return to your breath, return to your body, return to this present moment as often as possible. And it's going to make you an even more powerful, conscious creator. Yes. Love that. <laughs> Amazing advice. Thank you. John. <laughs> so where can my lovely listeners find you if they want to learn more about your work? Uh, yeah, you can find me on TikTok, John Hillstead. You can find me on Instagram, John Hillstead, um, johnhillstead.com for the website. So yeah, I'm not on YouTube yet. Get on it, John. <laughs> what am I doing? Actually, I do have, I, I was posting some short, the short videos, mm -hmm. um, but I haven't gotten into, I was thinking of doing some like <clears throat> some vlogs or something like putting some vlogs up there. I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah, definitely do a mix of both teaching vlogs bring all that good energy yeah. together you vlog on there um I used to I don't necessarily now because I feel like with lockdown I don't necessarily do anything that exciting to yeah. vlog. but I definitely used to when I used to travel and do loads of fun things I did you know what actually I just saw the other day one of your videos of you manifesting the Tony Robbins interaction I know I died, <laughs> I, died. I was like that is incredible. That is a powerful manifesto right there. A hug, that interaction. I was like, this is so cool. I mean, it was crazy. And the fact that, I mean, I was bugging my best friend next to him. I was like, take a bloody picture. Take a picture, Chris. <laughs> and obviously he was there like, yeah. And I was like, take a picture. So we didn't, obviously. And then it was so weird because one of my good friends at the time was like, Emma, I've just been following Tony's like Facebook page. Is this you? And someone right at the back had taken a picture of the screen with me hugging him. And I was like, how crazy that that person took that picture, uploaded it, and my friend saw it. Like I had my picture. So <laughs> that is amazing. I love it. It was wild. It was wild. But um, I've been so happy discussing manifestation with you, John, because I love your energy. I love what you're about. And um, it's just been amazing to share that with the lovely queen. So what is next for you? What's coming up? What can we expect? Yeah, I have my six-week conscious creation course uh, coming up. 
Um, so it's a six week course where you learn how to consciously create manifest while also reprogramming your subconscious mind through different modalities like hypnotherapy, like we talked about time techniques, which helps us release those limiting beliefs, limiting decisions. Um, so we're doing a lot of like unlearning and then we reprogram those new empowering beliefs and get you set up so that you have the confidence and the tools to go out and take action to create your, your dream life. Amazing. I love yeah. it. Sounds very exciting. Well, thank you so much, John, for coming on. It's been honestly such an honor and pleasure sharing this space with you. And I'm sure everybody listening will have taken away so many pearls of wisdom with them. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was actually a manifestation for me, like an unconscious one, I think, because like me seeing your videos back then and now full circle moment, it's been amazing. So thank you so much for having me on. It's been a blast. My pleasure. A manifestation is real, guys. We are proof of it. <laughs>